Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Introduction to Mathematical Statistics. We're in Chapter 2, part of this playlist that I'm calling Discrete Random Variables. And let's jump to today's topic, which is moment generated functions. So we're going to cover moment generated functions, and at the end we're going to do an R illustration. And I would definitely stick around for that. There we're going to use R's built-in function to take symbolic derivatives. It's pretty darn cool, and we're going to use that to, to create moment generating functions. So, but let's just jump in. So, the definition of moments let x be a random variable and k be a positive integer. The expected value of x to the k is called the kth moment of x. Now, the kth moment of x, the kth moment exists if and only if this is finite. So, basically, we don't want it to be infinity, is what this is saying. And also note that the mean, mu, expected value of x, is the first moment of x. Now, central moments are defined this way. Let x be a random variable with mean, mu, and k a positive integer. The expected value of x minus mu raised to the k is called the kth central moment of x. Some call it the kth moment about the mean of x, and it's the same thing, kth central moment of x. Note that sigma squared, which is the variance, is the expected value of x minus mu squared. It's the second central moment of x. Now, a quick review of calculus, a Taylor series of a real function f of x that is in infinitely differentiable at a real number a is the, this power series. And, and I'm not going to cover it because this is supposed to be a little bit review. So it's this sum of, of derivatives. Now note that when a is 0, so we plug in 0 for this, or we're expanding the function about 0, the series is called a Maclaurin series. And let's let f of x equal e to the x and a equals 0, then the Taylor's series, or the Maclaurin series, since we're expanding about a equals 0, for e to the x is this, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Now we're going to use this definition or this expansion for e to the x in, in a couple of our proofs. So now, the moment generating function, let x be a random variable. The expected value of e to the tx is called the moment generating function of x, denoted by mx of t. And it's this, mx of t is the expected value of e to the tx. Now this is provided that it's finite for all t in some small interval about zero. And pretty much everything we do in this playlist, this is going to be satisfied. I do have some videos on my channel where this is not satisfied, and it's and they're quite interesting videos. Now, a theorem, let mx be the moment generating function for a random variable x, then the kth moment of x is the kth derivative of the moment generating function for x evaluated t equals zero. That's a theorem that we will use over and over in this playlist. Now, quick proof is this. <clears throat> Using the Maclaurin series expansion for e to the tx, we have this. So the moment generating function of x is expected value of e to the tx. But let's expand e to the tx using the Maclaurin series, which is this. And, and it's basically stick in tx where there was an x previously. Now, expectations a linear operator, which we showed in an earlier video. So expect the value of 1 is 1. Expect the value of tx. Since t is a constant, it comes out and it just leaves expect the value of x. And then with this, this is t squared x squared over 2 factorial. And the constants come out front and this just expect the value of x squared. And then this is repeated for each term. Now let's differentiate this series term by term with respect to t, right? Because that's what the theorem says, the, the derivative of the moment generated function with respect to t. So let's do it once. Uh, first derivative of 1 is 0. First derivative of this term with respect to t is just e to the x. 
first derivative of this term, the 2 comes out, cancels with 1, leaving t e to the x squared. And then, then similar for the rest. Now evaluating this expression at t equals 0, which symbolic is this, the first derivative of the moment generating function of x, evaluated at t equals 0, is e to the x, right? When we plug in 0 for t, this is 0, so it drops out. This is 0. This is 0. Pretty much every term drops out but this first one. And that's the first moment of x, expected value. And that's what we, well, this is part of the proof. This is for when, you know, the, we take the first derivative, not the kth. But let's do it. Let's differentiate the moment journey function term by term with respect to t twice. So that means we're going to take the derivative of this sequence up here again. So derivative with respect to t of 1 is 0. Um, no, I'm sorry, this term here. So e to, the derivative of e to the x with respect to t, that's a constant, so it's 0. t, expected value of x squared, we just get x squared. Expected value of this with respect to t, the 2 comes out, cancel with one of those, and we get t e or you expect the value of x cubed. And then the next term we get t squared over 2 factorial e to the, you know, expected value of x to the fourth. And this goes on and on. Now, if we evaluate this at t equals 0, look, this, the second term drops out, the third term, all the terms drop out, but this first one, right? And so the second derivative of the moment generating function evaluated at t equals 0 is the second moment about x. Now, if we continue this on until we get to the kth derivative, the result's going to follow. But I can, you know, you can kind of see the pattern from here. So we're going to consider that proved. Now, a few theorems with respect to moment generating functions. Let, let x be a random variable with moment generating function mx of t. And let y be a random variable of ax plus b, where a and b are constants. The moment generating function of y which is my of t, which is the expected value of t to the y. Oh, that should be e t to the y, dang it. Um, is e raised to the bt times the moment generating function of x evaluated at e a t. So that's the moment generating function of y. Now let x, next theorem, let x1, x2, xn be independent random variables with moment generating functions mxi of t and let y be just the sum of these random variables then the moment generating function of y is just a product of the moment generating function of the xi so the moment generating function of y of t now this should say the expected value of e raised to the t i'll fix that in the hard copy it's just a product of the individual moment generated functions of the x's. Now, uh, the last theorem for this video is, and we're going to use this when we do variable transformations quite a bit. If the moment generated functions of two random variables, x1 and x2, are identical, and this is for all t within that small interval about zero, then the probability densities for x1 and x2 are identical. Okay, so now this is the R illustration that I in, I think ended up being pretty darn cool. So we create a function called DD, but it's really a recursive function of the built-in function D. This is the built-in R function called D, and D takes symbolic derivatives of some expression, and then the name, of course, is... The variable name it could be x or t or you know whatever in your expression you want to take a derivative with respect to but this calls it recursively so when order is more than one it calls itself again and then taking the one less derivative anyway this is so cool and we'll illustrate this you know some of the powers of this at the very end but first i want to illustrate the concept of moment generating functions so we're going to use an example from a previous video where we let x take on the values 0 through 6. And now we assigned probabilities to each of these values. Now this is a binomial distribution. We haven't covered it yet. We're going to cover it extensively in a later video. I think 
either two or three more videos from now. And essentially it assigns probabilities to the numbers zero through six. That's all we need to know now. We're gonna store that in F. So X is a vector of length seven. F is a vector of length seven, assigning probabilities to zero through six. And if we take X times F, so times is the, it's the chronic or product. So it takes component wise. So, com, so component one of X times component one of F, component two, and it creates a vector of link seven. And we need to sum those to create the mean value, which is three. And th we covered this in a previous video. So the variance is the sum of the X squared times F minus the mean, which we calculate up here, quantity squared, and it's 1.5. I just reprinted those to show you what we're, you know, we're going to get these exact values in a second. So let's look at the first and second derivatives of the moment generating function. So E to the TX. Let's take the first derivative with respect to T of this expression. And boom, we get this, E to the TX times X. That is so cool. It's, and it's built-in function in R. Well, the first one is to d go higher derivatives, you need that little function that I put at the, the beginning of this video. So let's take the second derivative with respect to x to the t, e to the tx, with respect to t, second derivative, if it's this, boom. Now, we're going to evaluate these, but when you evaluate them, R is going to look for values of t to put in and values of x to put in these when you evaluate them. So you have to have x and t, uh, you know, already defined. And so x we defined previously up here, it takes, it's a vector, link seven takes on the values zero through six. And we're going to assign t equals zero, right? Because we're using moment generated function. So we have the first derivative with respect to t evaluated at zero. And this is it. So we evaluate the moment generated function. So it puts in value, and we're doing it the first derivative, puts in values of t and, and f. Then we're taking the product of f and it creates this vector. So this is it. Now we need a summit to create the, the first moment, which is three. And that's the mean that we got previously. So this, yeah, that's the that's the first derivative of the moment generated function evaluated at t equals zero. Now the variance is the um, second moment evaluated at t equals zero times f summed minus the mean, which we calculated up here, quantity squared, which is 1.5. So the variance is the same. And okay, so that and that's it for this video. But these next three examples, I think, are so cool and worth knowing about. So the DD is that function I created up there. Let's take the first derivative of sine of TX squared with respect to T. And boom, you get this, cosine of TX squared times X squared, right? Uses the chain rule appropriately. Let's take the derivative with respect to X of that same function. And then you get cosine of tx squared times t times 2x, right? Took the chain rule appropriately. Let's take the second derivative of this sine of tx squared with respect to x. Boom, it pops this out, which is exactly the answer. Anyway, I just think that's so cool. Um, I'm running just a hair long in this video, but I think it's worth it to introduce this the, the symbolic derivative, you know, that's a built-in function in R. So I hope you enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.